The NBA game has had some of the best individual matchups we've seen in sports. Wilt vs. Kareem, Bird vs. Magic, KD vs. Giannis, and perhaps we're getting a glimpse into the future as the Grizzlies' John Morant and the Timberwolves' Anthony Edwards put on a show last night in Game 1 of their first round series. Not only did Edwards win the individual matchup, but he led his team to a victory that could shift the balance of this series into a huge upset. Let's go through what Morant did on offense first to get the 32 points. Watch how Towns wants Vanderbilt to switch with him to deal with the ball screen for Ja, but they screw it up as Vanderbilt starts running towards his man on the wing. If you let Ja get to the dotted line, forget about it. We got our first Edwards on Morant sighting, and the Grizzlies quickly set a ball screen, with Cat coming up above the three-point line to meet him. A beautiful lefty inside-out dribble allows Morant to split the defenders, then attack D'Angelo Russell to get two of his 20 free throws. Edwards falls asleep as the man who's responsible for boxing out the shooter, while Cat turns his body too much towards Steven Adams in this box out, allowing Ja to swoop in and shoot the floater wide open. On the handoff into ball screen, Cat again comes up high, and this allows Ja to split the defenders again, drawing two more help defenders in the lane. Check the gorgeous left-right euro step into lefty finger roll to avoid Edwards' block attempt. Ja was relentless attacking the paint, and watch how Minnesota is desperate to keep Cat out of the pick and roll action out top, so Beverly picks up Adams. However, Cat still doesn't want to get involved, hopelessly telling Beverly to switch again, but Beverly cannot leave Adams this close to the basket. As a result, Ja gets to the block before encountering resistance, and they have to foul. After a made bucket, Towns has to be protecting the rim against Ja in the open court, especially since he's guarding Steven Adams, a non-threat from anywhere outside of 8 feet. Instead, he stays above the 3-point line while Ja is accelerating past McDaniels and McLaughlin for an easy layup. When Cat fumbles this pass, we know we're about to witness something special, as Patrick Beverly glitches trying to run back and Ja just thunders down the two-hander. If you haven't figured it out yet, Cat is the guy they're targeting, and he foolishly steps up while also reaching in. Remember, Morant isn't a very good three-point shooter, so I'm not sure why he wants to keep stepping up this high. It puts the rest of the defense in peril as they put Ja back to the free throw line. Now it's time to examine what Anthony Edwards was doing to light up the scoreboard for 36 points. With the quick inside ball screen, Steven Adams drops, daring Edwards to shoot it and relying on Desmond Bain to get around quicker. I love the hop off the dribble and my only concern with his jumper is that it's a clear two motion shot with a release point over his head which can make it hard to get smooth energy transfer. But his legs are so powerful that I understand why he needs to temper that power with his arms as the ball swishes clean. It's really impressive how skilled Anthony Edwards is at this early stage in his career, and Ja is equally as impressive as they've both mastered the ability to shoot their balls into the basket. And they know as well as anybody that if you don't take care of those balls, you won't score in basketball or in life. That's why you must get Manscaped's performance package. It's vital to keep things tidy on your face and in your more sensitive areas, and their lawnmower 4.0 can take care of both. It's cordless and waterproof, so use it in the shower and you won't piss off your wife. But Manscaped's performance package has tons more. Their weed whacker defends you all up in your face, sending those annoying nose and ear hairs back into the stands. And the Crop Reviver has cool aloe vera to keep your balls dishing and swishing. Unfortunately for Ja, he's got Patrick Beverly hounding him into fumbling his balls too often. So avoid the Patrick Beverly's in your life. Instead, use my code BBALL to save 20% off your order. But I'll also call Manscaped and tell them to give you two free gifts for a limited time. The Shed Travel Bag and Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. I wear these all the time, and I wouldn't trust anyone else next to my performance package. So click on the link below, use my code BBALL, and you'll see how Steven Adams continues to drop in his pick and roll coverage, which allows Edwards to keep getting the screen until he gets comfortable. Going to his left, his shooting hip and elbow are already aligned to the hoop, and watch how he times the dribble just before the inside foot plant so that he can lift the ball from the ground straight up to the set point. He doesn't hang that much, the ball gets through the motion smoothly and drops perfectly off the back part of the rim and through the net. 
Edwards plays like a KG veteran already, using the drag screen with a left hand dribble to skip on the left foot before splitting and exploding by Jaron Jackson Jr. and lifting into an off foot lefty finish. The only way to stop him is to foul him. A little gamesmanship as Edwards pretends to call Beasley over so he can screen for him. Cat wants to set a screen for Edwards going towards the ball, so Brooks cheats over to stop this. Slow-Mo is worried about his man getting a skip to the corner, leaving the entire paint wide open. An easy read by Ant and an embarrassing defensive play by Memphis. You should never give up a dunk like this off a baseline out of bounds play. The Wolves run this same handoff into ball screen on top that the Grizzlies use, and notice how Adams stays at the three-point line to stop a potential three-point shot. Edwards takes advantage of the mismatch to isolate on him like the all-star that he's going to be very soon. Then stepping back into the dreaded long two range to nail this shot. Anthony, make this a three-pointer next time. It was clear the Minnesota scouting report said, let Edwards isolate if he gets an advantageous matchup. Zaire Williams was definitely at the top of their list, but here's the problem. Look at Williams' feet. He's forcing him middle instead of towards the baseline where Jackson could rotate over to help. Once you allow middle, this is where either open threes happen or and ones. Edwards is clearly a member of a very small club of players who need an extra defender to stop in transition, especially if you're as nonchalant as DeAnthony Melton is getting back. I get why Adams is worried about Cat's outside shooting, but considering how far in the backcourt Cat is, Adams must get over to show him an extra defender. Instead, a gorgeous right-left side jump for a lefty finish and another and one. You can see Edwards is rapidly becoming the man on this team, as he just backs up on Melton, then utilizes the gallop dribble to his left for a slightly unconventional left-right footwork, giving him just enough space to elevate over the contest to catapult this into the hoop. He does it again once Brandon Clark is on him, despite Clark being a very mobile big man, forcing Edwards deeper into his bag. But the result is the same, as he does his Michael Jordan impersonation with the fall away from 17 feet. My goodness! Edwards will also let the offense work for him, patiently playing his role in the corner. But why is Dylan Brooks stepping over so high on this? Jackson is right there to contain, and all it does is create a long closeout, which Edwards exploits with the gorgeous shot fake side dribble hop going to his left, it's an easier shot for a righty, and swish. Cat was doing work as well, with 22 points and 29 minutes of playing time to this point, so the Grizzlies opt to double him in the post. This was going okay until Clark's terrible closeout. Watch how he allows middle penetration instead of forcing into the baseline, where help can be much more effective. Not to mention, he jump stops way too far and too late. But Edwards' step through is absolutely gorgeous to avoid the charge attempt by Brooks. Many young players Edwards' age would just barrel through the defender for an offensive foul and turnover. And then the inside hand finish is chef's kiss. Strangely enough, we didn't get much from either of these two in the fourth quarter, which was controlled by the Timberwolves pretty thoroughly. This three-pointer off a of pick and roll is open when Brooks gives him too much space going under the hedge by Ja and effectively ended the game early. Just before this, we saw Anthony Edwards actually guarding Morant, but when he reaches in foolishly here and then Cat gets off balance before running into Bane, Ja gets yet another open runway with a non-stop light to the rim. But let's look at this defensive matchup, as Edwards was responsible in part for limiting the damage Ja had been doing for the first part of the game. In the second, Ja does get into the middle on Edwards, who turns and runs and is able to put pressure on the hip with the left hand while swiping with the right, just enough to cause Morant to miss the easy finger roll. As the lowest man on defense, it's Edwards' job to rotate over on penetration, and he perfectly deflects the ball out of his hands to prevent what would have been a surefire bucket or free throws. On this step up screen, Edwards is strong enough to continue his pursuit and I gotta say, this looks like a clean strip to me. Edwards knows Morant isn't a threat from three, so he correctly goes underneath the screen, enabling him to stay right alongside him and then elevate to contest into a tough bank shot, jaw can't hit. They went back to Beverly on Morant in the fourth, but Edwards is a very viable help defender so long as Ja doesn't try to kick to a wide open Brooks in the corner, as Edwards blocks his shot softly so Pat Bev can recover it. Perhaps Edwards has gotten to the point in his career where he'll get the benefit of the doubt from the referees. Since this was a pretty handsy attempt at staying connected through a screen, no call, and the broken play leads to another stop for Minnesota. 
perfect team defense as Ja comes out of the corner looking to attack the middle with Cat and Edwards pressuring. And the active hands here cause the pass to be way off target and the Grizzlies turn it over. Coach Finch realized he's better off with Beverly on the bench and Edwards on Morant, who doesn't even let him use the ball screen to the left, causing Ja to disengage with the offense. We already showed you the foolish reach in by Edwards that led to the Morant dunk, but then he stays in front of him to force the kick out and even hustles over to the corner to show a hand up, enough of a distraction to cause this shot to be off by an inch. And I love this one. Up by five and a chance to completely end the game with a stop, they kept Edwards on jaw with Beverly on Brooks. Checked the perfect denial defense to not let Morant even touch the ball on this key possession getting the offense so out of whack that Bain is jacking up a terrible and contested three-point shot with plenty of time on the shot clock, and the game was never in doubt from this point on. So keep your eye on this matchup going forward, particularly when Memphis has the ball. I suspect we'll see even more Edwards on Morant to give him a bigger and more athletic obstacle. And if the Ant-Man continues defending like this while simultaneously dominating with the ball, then don't be surprised to see the entire series be a huge upset.